Hi, everyone. How's it going? Thank you for joining us uh, on Adobe Live Pride Week. My name is Sin Lagos. I will be your host for today. I see already that there's a few people joining us on the chat. Thank you. Uh, de definitely, uh, if you're on YouTube or on Behance, join the chat. It gets to be a lot of fun. So hi, Doris. Hi, General Kenobi. That is amazing. Um, hi, Sean. Uh, and hi, Sam. How's it going? So today we are joined by Torin Reeves. Uh, he is a creator and today we were going to be working on something really cool and I'm going to let him take on the stage here and uh, invite him to let us know a little bit more about himself and his project. Yeah, thank you Sin, so much for uh, for having me and, and hosting me and uh, uh, everybody who's in the, the chat already uh, contributing. I, I hope uh, to get to as many questions uh, as, as you guys have in the, in the time that I'm, I'm live. Awesome. Guys, yes. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. Yes. So we already see here Francisco, Steve, um, Sam is just always on like joining us and keeping us, you know, excited. So thank you for joining us here. Um, yeah. If you have any questions, um, definitely join in on the chat and I'll be relaying the questions over to Torin. Yeah. Thank you. Can, can everybody see my screen? All okay. Oh, yeah, perfect. There we go. Um, yeah, so we'll just expand this. But yeah, so today's project, I think, is best given with a, a little bit of context as to, to who I am and, and a bit about my story. So I'll try to be brief. But um, yeah, so I, I graduated from college in, in 2010 with a, a BA in, in English and uh, naturally started cage fighting as, as one does and uh, kind of found my, my footing and my, my placement in the world over the course of a, a few years of competing and, and boxing and jujitsu and kickboxing and, like I said, MMA and wound up at this really cool place in Rochester called the Community Place, which uh, hired me to teach kids who were at risk um so they could get their ged diplomas and i think i was 24 at the time and i had students as old as 28 and i was working with kids who you know were really disenfranchised with the local public schooling system and i actually was uh, the beneficiary of of being able to go to a, a pretty prestigious uh college prep school for my entire undergraduate career and i just remember thinking when i was working with those kids like there's nothing inherently special about me that would justify the opportunities that I had versus what they had. And and uh, a lot of my time there really, really had a, a pretty profound uh, impact on me and, and really paints a lot of what I do moving forward. And at that prep school, I was the only male person of color in my entire high school from, yeah, literally from ninth grade all the way till I graduated. And so I didn't really have too many black male role models uh, to look up to while I was there. And, you know, when you're a teenager, you're already kind of dealing with, with just a lot. <laughs> and so I think that, um, you know, uh, I definitely ran my teachers uh, uh, for a loop. And I don't think when I graduated or by the time I graduated, I had a really good reputation as a, a student. And that's uh, pertinent for, for what today's project is, because I, I went to, um, you know, the school I went to was right in the suburbs of, uh, of Rochester, which is a very affluent area. And then I lived on one of the worst streets in, in the entire city. And so today's project kind of speaks to, to that, um, that street that I'm from, because I'm, I'm in a place now professionally where I can kind of um, represent myself and my history in my own terms. And I, I would like to think that that's something that I really embody through all of my business practices and something that hopefully uh, touches a, a vein thematically with, with this month being Pride Month. Um, you know, I, I, I can't imagine what it's like. I was talking to a, a friend of mine who was telling me her journey about coming out from the closet. And I just, I can't even imagine what that process is like. And so just being able to sit and listen and learn, um, you know, to not, to have an experience where I have the privilege where I don't have to consider telling people what I'm into is just so different. And uh, I, I always try to make sure that, you know, I take those lessons to heart and and make sure that, especially for this month, I'm, I'm not falling foul of some of the things we see larger brands do where it feels like a bit of tokenism. But um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll talk more to that later. But as soon as I um, left the community place, I knew I wanted to do something in marketing. 
And I, I started at one of Rochester's more prestigious um, marketing agencies. And I felt like I had all this talent that was just kind of not being spent. And I, I learned a lot. I started as a paid uh, search, like a pay-per-click specialist. And I thought like, okay, I'm going to start in paid search. And I'm going to work my way to, you know, being a content producer. And that was just not the track. And like my high school experience, I was the only person of color in the entire building. Um, and so I bounced around a few agencies and then right at the start of COVID, I lost my job and I started Kesa. and it was, you know, kind of like this real watershed moment for me where I felt like, okay, like I'm going to do this now on my own terms. And I actually kind of hit the ground running with a number of apparel brand clients, all very small, mostly friends of mine, but they needed content immediately, but couldn't afford the larger agencies that they were working with. And I kind of fit this perfect middle market. So I did my very first photo shoot with my cell phone. I had a Pixel 3 at the time and I used Lightroom on mobile and uh, uh, a wow. client sent me a bunch of t-shirts. Yeah, Pixel Team. Um, <laughs> video, not so much, but for photography, uh, not so it's bad. Nice. But yeah, yeah. Video, it's, it's like even today I have the Pixel 6 Pro and it's it's a rough journey. But um, yeah. I launched a campaign using these photos that I took like the same day I got the, um, the T-shirts and the shorts in the mail. And that campaign just took off. And uh, that was the first time I was like, okay, I'm validated. Like, let's do something with this. Like, I do know what I'm doing. Like, I, there is talent in there. And so I launched another campaign for that same brand where I labeled myself as an all-American. And I was super nervous about doing it because if, to look at me, I do not have the uh, typical uh, characteristics of who an all-American might be. It's very blonde haired, blue eyed, but um, I'm a pretty patriotic person. I come from a military family and my grandfather fought for America when it would not have done the same for him. And so it always bothered me that I, if somebody looked at me, they would never have assumed that I would fit that mold. And so I just gave it to myself. And wow. uh, that speaks to, you know, that, that urgency in me to kind of represent myself on my own terms and likewise with everybody who I work with. And so this campaign, it was nice to kind of put myself in the forefront because the CrossFit community is oddly conservative in some ways. And so while there are a lot of messages of support that really meant a lot, there were definitely a few that were wild. <laughs> um, but I just don't let that kind of stop me whatsoever. And that client was in like, hey, you want to design some shorts for us? And I took that idea and ran. And those shorts uh, were like a complete hit. Um, I worked with uh, the number six CrossFit, CrossFit athlete in the world, Jacob Hepner, to design a few different um, colors ways and yeah it was like this thing i'd never done before but was really successful at early on and uh from there i just kind of flourished and so once i started designing for more and more apparel brands and different um you know requests from clients kind of came across my desk i promised myself i'd never say no to anything um and i would just teach myself how to do it and uh, that worked out to the point where I kind of caught this bug where I was designing apparel all the time. And so by, I think, February of 2021, I launched my very first shirt and I called it Quiet Thirst and Blossom. And again, that street that I grew up on was called is Thurston Road. And uh, I really felt like I was in full bloom and I wanted to have my first shirt kind of veer from the status quo. I, I think, you know, as a former MMA fighter and a current boxer and a CrossFit athlete, uh, you know, a fluorescent or a floral pink is not your first thought for a color that I go to. But again, like I really want to make sure that I'm embodying a lot of the uh, the values that I have through every project. And um, that, that started yeah, right with a shirt. Yeah, and it, it's really nice and, and liberating and kind of, you know, trying to represent or expand our i think the the prerequisite qualities of what we think is masculine or not and just kind of dispelling some of those tropes um because i work for myself and i'm my own client like i i don't have to worry about making me mad so if it feels right to me i'll i'll go in that direction oh. and i can take a lot it's of like risks a, when it comes to stuff like that yeah it's like a nice experiment because you have a hold of the narrative and then you have to sort of what I'm hearing from you is like, you have to be able to then 
have some insights of what is it that you believe in and have yeah. some sensibilities for the world beyond you. Right. Um, so like your friend coming out or your understanding of who, how to represent yourself as an American, oh, I completely hear you on that end. Actually, Penny also really loves CrossFit. So she's on board with you on that front. Um, awesome. So that's really, really cool. Uh, can yeah. you tell us a little bit about um, how this uh begins to correlate to what inspired you inspired you to create the project today? Yeah, so the project today, um, so this shirt was just for friends and family, and a lot of people ended up asking me for it. And so I launched my own little tiny apparel brand, and that took off. And today's project, um, I came out with a summer 21 and a fall 21 collection, and I'm rolling into the um, summer 22 collection, and, and hopefully the, the fall 22 collection. And um, it's, I wanted to do a project where I could kind of show clothes in a different manner. Uh, a lot of the client requests, like, you know, they'll send me brand new shirts and that's great, but uh, actually to be around, to, to survive as a business for this long is a point of pride. And so I wanted to take photos of the apparel um, on friends in whatever state it's in. And, and so it's a lot of weathered stuff. And today's project, I went back to my my uh, street, Thurston, and I, I used a, a friend of mine named Lex who's modeled uh, for me before. And she was actually wearing a lot of my shirts for this shoe. And so today we're gonna be going through a bunch of photographs from that shoot that we did on, on Thurston, wearing uh, you know the clothes that I've, I've lived in and breathed in and kind of roll mm. into this next season. But I wanted to pay homage um, to last year, and it's tricky, like I want to not reuse out of a, a lack of creativity, but kind of reuse because we don't have to just leave things behind uh, for the sake of leaving things behind. And uh, I want to kind of speak to a more mindful consumptionist uh, approach to things. And that's that's a hard box to check. I think if you're cynical at all, you can just say, well, you know, he just colored the same shirt differently. And I've got new designs as well, but I did want to stop and say, listen, that I'm coming out with a second or a third season of, of apparel is wild to me. Uh, and I'm so proud of the, the fact that I've, I've made it this far. So I'm going to mm -hmm. load up Lightroom. Yeah. Uh, bravo. Yeah. Thank you I so much. I mean, I'm already super intrigued because uh, one of my favorite things is to learn the behind the scenes of what really makes a company uh, become what it is. Um, I think there's there's so much that we see and sort of like uh, in the front of it all where we kind of forget the creators that, that brought up these ideas or yeah. the convictions that define the journey of that company. And it, it sounds really insightful. I'm really, really excited to, to see how you um, go through your process in Lightroom. Lightroom is one of my favorite um, Adobe programs along with Photoshop because it's master all. So uh, <laughs> no. I'm curious to see your workflow. Thank you so much. And, and uh, convictions are a great, Word. It's the perfect word, actually. So it's very insightful for you. Um, even my brand name, Kesa, um, which is short for Kesa Katane, when I started jujitsu back in 2010, that was like the first move that made sense to me. And as a white belt, I was catching black belts with it. And I think if you work in any industry for long enough, you kind of see behind the curtain and you'll probably run into things that don't make sense to you. And so by naming my my brand Kesa, it was kind of like a promise to myself that whatever I do moving forward will always make sense to me. And if it doesn't, then there's no room for it. And I didn't think at the time how liberating that would be, but it saved me so much trouble and heartache. Like I've never mm -hmm. taken on a client that I didn't believe in, uh, or I've never stuck with a project that didn't make sense, or if there's a business practice that fell untoward, I just don't do it. And uh, it keeps me on the level because even if something fails, uh, I'm I'm perfectly fine with being held accountable for it because I, I know where it came from. And hopefully that's communicated with the actions that I take and the business practices and, you know, all the way down to, um, you know, the, the models that I work with and how I try to represent people to the best of my ability on their own terms. And as far as Lightroom goes, uh, I'm sure that there are going to be a lot of experts in, in the chat and you'll probably find I've got yeah. a very iterative approach. Like I am just that 
that weirdo who just like, I like toggling things and just saying like, well, what, what works? Like, what, what am I trying to get mood wise? And again, this yeah. is like right on the corner of my street. So I'm, I'm ready to dive in. I, I figured at first we'd just go through some of the photos and I can kind of start selecting like which ones I want to work with a little bit today. And then Great. we might edit our way through uh, whatever we have time for if that works for you guys. Yeah. Yeah, I, I also love that. Um, let's invite our chat here to collaborate with us. If y'all have Ooh. have any tips or um, out on YouTube, our YouTube community, uh, if you guys have any tips on some of your favorite um, resources or features on Lightroom that you would like to share with us, and maybe we can explore some of those here live, definitely join the chat and I'll be reading them, reading those to Torin. Yeah, um, and so this is a photo that is actually of me in front of my house on Thurston as a kid. And when I came out with that shirt, I actually, I designed a box that went with Quiet Thurston Blossom. And I wanted people when they opened it to feel like it was blooming. And so the inside of it is that photo in the background. And so I wanted to kind of have that mimetic response to um, to opening. And I spent more time and money on, on the boxes than I did on the shirt itself. But uh, so this is kind of my barometer for like, I like that there's a little bit of grain and that, you know, the clarity is not the greatest, but the, the shadows are strong. It's a pretty warm photo. Um, and so I'll probably lean in this direction. But of course, I'm always open to deviating 100%. Um, but I, I do, I think for me, the idea for some of these photos, at least, is to kind of speak to that past in a way that's also a little bit more forward thinking. And uh, this is, again, lacks that hopefully it shows well, um, we might have to zoom out a little bit. But yeah, she, Lex is a complete force of nature. And um, she's a good friend of mine from Buffalo. Um, and uh, yeah, the first shoot that we did, I just, I was so struck by, like, I think one of the more contemporary tropes of portrait photography that I have seen is kind of like this soft blank expression, which is totally fine. Like if that, if you can make that work, like God bless you, because I absolutely cannot. But whenever yeah. Lex is like looking at anything, she's, it's, it's like, you can tell she's considering it at a very high degree. And I don't know, like when I look at something, like if you just catch a candid photo of me, I look completely confused because I probably am. But Lex is like the exact opposite. It's like she's thinking about something at a genius level. And uh, I just, I am so awestruck by it. And so um, most of my favorite photos of her historically have been just her like looking around and waiting for me to get my little act together. Um, <laughs> I love yeah. I love when you have a, a subject or uh, that also tends to, be somebody familiar. So you have this like um, sort of uh, interaction with them that is a little bit different. And I love that you're catching those little elements about her being challenging in a way. That's so yeah. cool. No, uh, I don't really work too often with paid models. Um, and so like a lot of my friends are just like, hey, I've got like an afternoon just because my schedule can be so wonky. It can actually be hard for me to be like, okay, in six months, I've got this like hard date set. Um, and so for me as a photographer, I found early on using mostly my, my friends and family, it was really important for me to just make the subject feel comfortable. And whatever happened once we kind of cleared that hill, those were always the best photos. Um, and so having a rapport with Lex, it's like you ever like see directors that work with the same actors all the time. I used to just think that that was so weird. And now like it totally kind of makes sense. Cause it's like, once you find that person who like you groove with, like keep jamming yeah. with them. Like you can kind of keep going back to the well. Yeah. But I'm a fan of this photo. Um, I don't know what the, the chat's thoughts are on it, but I think I'm just gonna kind of flag it for now. Usually when I'm selecting photos, I'll just like, I'll just give it like a five or like a four star and then I'll flag it. And then at the end, I'll like sort by stars and I'll start editing kind of based on that if that works for everybody. But if there's a photo or a frame that, that um, really jumps out at people, please let me know. Yeah, I really dig, dig this. It has such a urban uh, energy about it. And I think that's that your um, clothing also has that. Uh, I don't know if that was intentional, but it's really cool. So this shirt, um, it's based on one of my favorite Muhammad Ali shirts. It was actually when he was actually called Cassius Clay. And he had this really great shirt with a very similar font where the C kind of uh, went over both. And that was one of the first 
like shirts I bought for myself when I started fighting and I trained in it all the time and I still have it somewhere. It's literally like blood stained and just gnarly, but I wanted to have my own version of that. Um, just kind of speaking to Thurston and just that, that toughness um, that, that I associate with it. But yeah, she's just, she's just an hi, intense person. I just want to do a quick shout out to the chat. Um, hi, Rasit. Hi, Ismael. Um, if you're if you're just joining us, we are here with Torin Reeves, and he's taking us through his workflow and also all, all, all of his insights on how he produces his marketing work for um, his clothing, I mean, his clothing line. And so far we're looking at some really cool shots. So if you have some questions, definitely drop them in the chat. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, one of the things that I look for when I'm going through frames is like, is the expression telling a story? Um, am I interested in the background? Am I interested in the colors? Am I interested in the lighting? Like if I can check that box for, um you know every one of those elements and i'll go okay like there's something here and because i end up cropping things for different uses like i might have a linkedin banner uh or i might have, which is very wide as you know uh but still narrow or i might have like the uh the new instagram portrait which is mm. what's that ratio is it like a four by five or something like yeah, that yeah it's a four it's by of, five yeah yeah so I like actually... sometimes 10 13 50 by 1080 i want to say oh my god one you're of those. genius <laughs> you have to keep you're it in your head. oh my god no you're a genius uh and i'm super <laughs> envious that you can remember that but yeah sometimes yeah. i'll try to find photos where i think some cropping highlights something uh in particular so like i found there are so many photos that when i'm going through i'm like this is it this is the one and then when i have to go to crop it's like this doesn't quite work and a photo that i didn't necessarily love might just have that element like just that angle that's really really breathtaking and so i try to like never dismiss something uh on first glance or fall too in love mm -hmm. with it um because it's not necessarily working out right away but i love this yeah, photo i totally relate to that i think the sometimes the cropping becomes this new opportunity to recompose your shot in post um, yeah. and give it a new kind of like energy um i love doing cropping sometimes i spent a lot of time in that so i totally get that yeah yeah cropping and then placing the logo like on the center that is my favorite exercise like overlaying font on an image and i really like placing font like in the position we'll probably do more this tomorrow that kind of bothers you a little bit like if you just scooted it over up like an inch like i like it way more um because i think that if you're engaged in it to that degree then you're really spending some time with it um and i think that that's that's a good thing by and large but yeah i love oh my she, god uh, you're such an outlaw <laughs> <laughs> you're like i want to break the rules but the rule well, is to break the rules. <laughs> oh, no. Well, see, because I'm self-taught, like I always tell people, like, because I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know what can't be done. Um, and so I, I had a, a conversation with another local design firm and they were like, well, do you know all these like rules about graphic design? And I was like, no, like, I don't know shit. Like, I just do right. what I like. <laughs> like that's that's that refreshing. Is exactly what yeah. Um, yeah. No, me feeling it is my own barometer of does this work or not? Um, yeah, I think that's really helpful. And, um, and just like everybody on the chat, I think that's a great advice to take in. I think it can be a, a bit, um, almost like daunting to tackle any of these programs or jump into a new craft that you might be interested in, maybe photography, maybe marketing, maybe you want to design your own clothing line. I think Torin's advice here on just being able to trust that being a novice is actually kind of a good thing and being able to trust your gut in that respect take note i think that's wonderful golden nuggets right there yeah um you know i, I always tell people because I, I do a lot of work now with different agencies to increase the number of by poc hires and mm -hmm. one of the exercises that i kind of offer to them is like if you just go through you know some 19 year old's instagram feed and it speaks to you that kid has something like going on as far as taste is concerned that they, they may not even know is like a marketable skill. And so, so many of us are already so creative. Like the, the kids that I work with now and I, uh, you know, do volunteer education for, they already are like fluent in this design language without any really thought about it. 
And uh, they're so good at framing things and trusting their own instincts. And so I always try to, to let people know, like my barometer for success is really like, does this speak to me? Like, do I right. mess with this? Like, is this something that, that I really, really like? Because you can have, it, it's so hard to tell, like, will this campaign go well or will it not? Like all that stuff just almost seems arbitrary. But if before I even said it live, like if I really loved the work that I did, then whatever comes after that is icing on the cake. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, it's really interesting to to observe children uh, learn something brand new, and it's almost like, well, how can I go back to that uh, that foundation? But being able to trust my instinct, and also once you learn something, being able to say, okay, I'm gonna let that go, allow that to be kind of in the back of my brain, and just uh, yeah. feel it as an instinct as opposed to uh, let me follow that rule, because it can be stifling, right? It's like the whole idea is to be creative. Um, so it should be fresh ideas from wherever it comes from. Um, yeah. I also like the fact I was just going to say earlier, by trusting your own instinct, I think you're probably, uh, as a consequence relating to other folks that come, have that same experience as you. So you're being really, uh, you're honoring that experience and within your work. So you're able to relate to other people that you know, among so many people that we can have that are actually genuinely uh, connected to your brand. Yeah, no, that's really insightful. And I've never thought of it that way. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, I, and I think that that's one of the many reasons why like representation and, and advertising is so important and why I'm such an advocate for it. Um, in Rochester, as of last year, there were more ad agencies locally than there were black men employed by them. And uh, that's just crazy to me in, in 2021. And so I brought that statistic to light on LinkedIn and then tagged all the local agencies in it and then did that on Facebook and Instagram. And they weren't happy at first, but everybody reached out right away. And now we're doing like development programs to increase the representation throughout the office. And yeah, I'm also a firm believer and this. This goes back to the overall theme about like representing yourself in your own terms, that it's not enough to just be the token black person in the office. Like I want blackness to be allowed in the office, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. And, um, you know, I, I wonder oh, if, yes, if, you, if you felt that being, um, you know, within marginalized Let's, communities yeah. yourself. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's so interesting to say the way you just said that, because it does, um, it goes back to like, a, to a moment where I used to say that there's that energy that uh, is part of your culture that can sometimes be uh, like the volume gets turned down a little bit, right? Regardless of if you present, represent yourself as Latino, Latinx, for example, I can't escape it. I, I'm really brown. I, I look Latina, my curls, I don't know, maybe my accents, right? You probably hear it. Um, and and then there's the, the, the fact that maybe when you go into places, that uh, energy, uh, that culture can be uh, tossed to the side and it's, it's just... Uh, more professional or more proper to to represent this angle. So uh, that I, I get that, I get where you're coming from, from that perspective. And I love that we're having all these conversations. I love that we have a community here, even today being able to celebrate Pride, Pride Month, right? Like, wow, yeah. I love that Behan's is like, yes, let's get colorful. Let's just talk about all these subjects and uh, showcase how our our work represents these conversations. Um, yeah. And so, uh, yes, really, really beautiful. Uh, I have a comment here from Jeremy on regards yeah. to Lightroom. He has an advice yeah. for you. So one of the yeah. things that he does is he uses one stars as a way to reject a frame, which is Ooh. interesting. So that's, that's cool. I sometimes do that too. Like three stars is a maybe, more or less. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. No, I uh, I usually do five stars in the flag because it's like, oh, I love this. And then if I'm yeah. like, if I'm on that, maybe I'll use a four. But I'm, I'm always reluctant to like go lower than that because like in my little like heart, I'm like, well, what if like what if somebody like saw that I gave this photo of them a one star? Like, <laughs> do, will they think I don't think that they're like beautiful or, you know, or attractive? Somewhere like, down in history. Some... Yeah, it's like <laughs> I don't want you to ever stumble upon that. Like, I'd feel terrible. Um, so I yeah. usually go with a high mark and then just kind of go back through. And there have been so many times where I've been like, I did a project, I finished it. And then eight months goes by and it's like, oh, like, let me revisit this. And some of the frames yes. I didn't like mark at all 
suddenly just have this like new use and purpose and I'm like obsessed with them um oh, absolutely so, yeah, yeah yeah so I've always revisiting to, your to archives zero. yeah revisiting your archives is really vital I I'm glad you do that too because you never know what you reject and then you see a new opportunity down the road yeah um, Sin, I'm so glad you mentioned that oh no, please go ahead that little flag that says rejected uh, that that's hard for me to use. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. It's like, oh, I don't yeah. wouldn't reject anybody. But no, so I'm a chronic screenshotter and or like picture mm -hmm. saver. Like if I see something, I save it. And I just put together for my last two collections, I put together an editorial kind of like on the inspiration behind them. Mm -hmm. And so I've got screenshots and like JPEGs literally from 2001. And I went through everything that composed this editorial. And it was just organizing all that stuff was such a massive undertaking. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I love revisiting work. And uh, it was so like funny, like there were a few pictures that I knew in my mind I had in a folder somewhere and like went on the hunt for for like hours and then when i found it i was like oh this is like resolution from 2004 i have to refine this photo like at a like an actual oh, decent yes. resolution now so it was uh it was crazy so what do you what do you like using at the moment to archive your photos because as a photographer um i imagine there's plenty of that that you need to be able to store yeah, so Lightroom does a lot of the heavy lifting. Um, I have a pretty, uh, I have everything backed up on like Microsoft OneDrive. I have hard drives with stuff. Um, and then likewise, I have like a Google Photos account um, and like my Google Drive. So there's like a lot of redundancies just in case something happens. But um, yeah, I, I'm like yeah. one of those those people, like when I get a new phone, I keep the other one pristine. And so it was really cool to go back to like my iPhone 4S from 2010 and just like scroll through all the screenshots and mm -hmm. uh, Instagram looks so different back then. But um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So but I'm, I'm always <laughs> Talk like about making sure that I, Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm always trying to bring the, the past uh, or at least represent it in what I'm doing yeah. moving forward. Yeah, I actually that's one of my favorite things about Lightroom versus Lightroom Classic, oh, wow. the ability of having my images stored in the cloud. So to some extent, I know they're there safely if all else fails um, and just being able to have access to them. I don't know if you ever play with Lightroom on the iPad or um, on your device. That yeah. accessibility is like wonderful for me, for my workflow. Yeah, so I, likewise. I, I welcome you to use it if you haven't used it. Yeah, uh, it's especially important for me on my phone because it, you can look at something on a monitor all day and it's like, okay, like this giant image on this giant screen looks <laughs> a certain way. But then when I like look at it on my phone, I'm like, uh, like oh, <laughs> like, like right. this isn't translating or like the colors are completely different. Um, mm -hmm. And so I've been really considering switching back to an iPhone just because that's like the most ubiquitous screen. That's how most mm -hmm. people see most images ever. And um, that, that would definitely be a good touch point for me to just kind of have in my pocket all the time, just to make sure that all the editing I'm doing is translating on the medium that it's most likely to be seen on. Wow. Yeah, I, I don't know how, how true that is. <laughs> that uh, the majority of people use iPhones. I have encountered a lot of people with Androids. So yeah. I would be really curious to not, um, or like in Asia, there's a lot of people that use oh, Androids. Yeah. Um, I went to Costa Rica recently and I just kept seeing people with Android phones. And Ooh. I have no sites whatsoever. I've used both uh, at some point. I mean, I, I love my Google Pixel, but I have had that question in my mind, like, being able to be in a in a place like Costa Rica and knowing that even here there's a person browsing potentially your work in a different language altogether. But yeah. you know, it's it's kind of intriguing, I guess, from a culture aspect, from a uh just a study of like how we behave as humans to be able to know yeah. that, that that's a thing. Um it was a bit mind boggling for a little bit there. Yeah, no, that's that's great insight. I, I think because there are so many variations of Android phones that any one display kind of might get yeah. kind of lost in the weeds. But just as, in terms of like this is this is the display that we're all using. Um, I guess I was I was under the assumption that that it was Apple, but no, you're totally right. Like in different places, like I know in Africa they use or yeah they use like a ton of Samsung. Like that's just the brand. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and so it's yeah. it's crazy to, to learn about those differences. Right. But yeah, actually, so my I mean, mom's house or the house I grew up on is like right behind this tree. So this is like a complete trip. And we also, we did this photo shoot without, like, I just, we drove there, did this shoot and left. And I was like, okay, if my mom comes outside and sees us, like, it's going to be a half hour of us talking to her about <laughs> embarrassing stories. Uh, so I'm just going to like try to do this covert op style. And uh, it completely, it completely worked. I love this. I love, I, I know. I love that like environment, just being able to do that vanishing point is, is a good select there. Yeah. But yeah, she always looks just like so locked in. And uh, <laughs> these were shorts that I came out with um, shortly after I launched that shirt. And uh, I love naming things. And so I uh, I designed three pairs of shorts based on like the first three dates me and my wife went on. And on our very first like major date, she was driving me someplace and I was like, where are we going? She goes, Niagara Falls. And I was like, well, how are we going to cross the border? Like, I don't have my passport and she's like no i've got it i was like where did you where did <laughs> that's you find amazing it? <laughs> wow it's like, a, it's like a felony <laughs> like i barely like, i barely know you um so yeah that was uh so these shorts are called remember our first date and so i, I took the the hex code from photos that's of so us cool. um at the falls and just try to make that nice. that color uh embodied into that yeah Ooh. so I, i'm i'm a, these are like a yeah, these are like a very emotionally tethered pair of shorts to me. And uh, when I was designing them, she was like, you should have a logo right there. And I was like, sure. And so I put the word sure right on the on the shorts because I couldn't think of what else to put. It was a placeholder. And it turns out I like actually liked the way it looked. And so that's her super, like she's just off the cuff, like great contribution. So it, it speaks yeah. to that, like just what people feel in their hearts. Like when they just say it, that can be the best design cue that you get. Do you find yourself sharing uh, your portfolio work on Behance and putting snippets of that story? Because I'm like super intrigued the 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 storyline of like creating some uh, an apparel, but like beyond just the working part. But like I love that sentimental touch to it. Yeah. So the the editorial I was speaking about earlier, the refraction, um, the expanded version is up on Behance. And that started out, I was talking to a, a pretty big brand and they said that they liked my apparel designs, but likewise, they didn't know how I got there. And so they're like, can you just put together like a little something for us to kind of explain like what your creative process is? And so that yeah, little like nugget, idea. yeah, it was a great idea. And that little nugget turned into a 200 and something page editorial that like I've spent the last six months obsessing over. And so it definitely, without being too on the nose, I hope, kind of guides people. Like I'd like to show like this was the vibe and then this was where I ended up. And like, I like to let people kind of come to their their own conclusions about it. But there are a few times where I'm, I'm a little bit more direct or uh, declarative in, in how I, I came to what I ended up designing. But yeah, that's yeah. Um, it's it's fascinating to, to see that stuff. Yeah, I love sharing on um, Behance directly from Lightroom too. So I've, um, whenever you guys are are completed with something on a project on Lightroom, I did that's a little tip or feature that I had no idea existed. And I was like, wait, hold on. I can just grab everything from here. Yeah. It's like, I've been on um, Behance since forever. And it feels like so many things have changed. There's so many little cool features now that just like start surprising me. Um, yeah. So. No, that's such great insight. I'm pretty new to Behance. So it's cool to hear like how there are still little like tricks hidden like underneath the, the corners. And when I stumbled upon that you could add your Spotify playlist, I put that right in that um, editorial of mine. Cause I, nice. I'm like weird. Like I'll listen to the same song on repeat for hours. Cause I'm trying to like live in that vibe when I'm designing or like photo grading uh, or, or doing any color correction. And so I was like, okay, here's a playlist of all the songs that I had on loop, like during this entire past year of, of working. And so that's right at like the top of the, uh, the editorial. And uh, Behance is so awesome. Like if you think about all the, the, negative sentiments people have towards social media as a whole. Behance is like the one social media platform where everybody on there is just kind of with it and very supportive and encouraging. Like I haven't stumbled upon any negativity whatsoever. And I'm sure that maybe it exists somewhere, but that by and large, you can go on there and spend a fair amount of time just looking at stuff that's all 
kind of curated to help you be more creative and to add something to your day to day is something that um that Adobe should really be proud of. Yeah, I love hearing that. I love hearing that because I feel the same exact way and I haven't had a bad experience at all. It's like yeah. um it's almost be- become a space to uh hone in on the kind of audience, my my target audience, which you know, that's the branding technical term, but in reality, I just want to connect with people like me, people who have still that love for the craftsmanship of design and graphic design and other designs out there, other other disciplines that involve creativity, which I totally find on Behance, where maybe in places like Instagram and Facebook, all those things, it's a bit more saturated with other things. Uh, so it's not as... Um, as true to like the craftsmanship, somebody just oozing over. Oh, I love this, this editing style that you did on on these images. Like, yes, that's the conversation I want to have about how we create different styles. Which, by the way, I'm curious to see um, how you edit these images. Do you transform them quite a bit, or do you like uh, just um, you know improving the quality of the image? So um, I can start going into some editing pretty soon. I think we've got a pretty fair selection of photos that I'm into. Um, So yeah, let me sort this by star rating. And yeah, I mean, it varies. There have been times where I felt like I played it a little safe. And then there have been times where like I really pushed it and I was like, okay, this is kind of surreal. Really, I just try to go with what, what feels right. And there have been times where I found a look that was very different than what I ended up with like long, long term. Like I go through the entire like production of this is like the look and then I revisit it like we talked about and then go, well, let me, now that I've learned some stuff, let me like take another whack at this and then I completely change it. Um, but yeah, for this one, again, just kind of going back to this reference photo, like I, I do want to have a somewhat nostalgic feel. So I, I can definitely see me kind of maybe playing around with like the luminance uh, a bit with the uh, the greens. Like I, there are a couple colors that I'm a big fan of and I like greens for whatever reason, and then like blues, they make my heart so happy. Like, I, like I'm such, I'm such a huge fan. So like there are a lot of times where it's like, okay, well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna start here and see what kind of happens. And I, hopefully this translates a little bit um, over the, the stream. Uh, and if it doesn't, my my apologies for sure. But like, I'll play around with like the hues of the greens. Um, I think the the darker it starts to look a little bit more candy ish. And I, I think for this, like, I want a warmer photo because Rochester, for those who are unaware, has like an eleven month winter, and so summers are so special to me. Like, like it will it will snow in May. Like, you can mess around and be like, yeah, we're about to get eleven inches of hard snow, uh, May sixteenth. Oh yeah, it's it's the absolute worst. Like, whenever you think you've escaped it, it's like it's like uh, Jason, where it's just like it's just walking behind you forever. Uh, and so when we do have Perpetual summers, perpetual snow. Yeah, perpetual snow. So summers are are super important to me, and I definitely want to speak to that with. The, uh, this project where things are maybe a little bit warmer, but not like too, too warm. Um, I might. So, oh, I'm so are you there. picking that reference from that image that um, that photo that you just put? I think it just came up there. Is that your yeah, reference so point? Kind of like. Uh, so when I like speak to reference points, like I think that there are people who are way more technically proficient than I am who will go, that's the value of green in that photo. I will make that the value of green in the other photos that we're working on now for me like a reference point is like again like very loose term like just like what's what was the vibe in that photo like what emotion Mm -hmm. am i getting from this what's it making me feel and then how can i take those feelings and use the techniques that i've i've learned and put those in here the best that i can so sometimes i end up designing very far away from that uh, and that's totally valid as well yeah yeah definitely i like that it's not too specific so that way you have room for different creativity and you allow your yourself some room yeah but yeah again these are all my clothes actually i'm wearing this shirt right now and these sweats um and i love that like lex is always down to work because for my brand everything is unisex to the best of my ability um, yeah. A lot of the manufacturers will have different cuts for different genders, but I, I didn't want anybody 
to feel left out with the apparel that I was making. Oh, and so yes. I try to like <laughs> speak to that with the sort of clothes that I have on the models. And again, mm-hmm. like um, just sort of the, the connotations of, of how I'm posing people or the poses that they're in and where I'm shooting from. Like, I don't want anything to be exploitative. And I think that there's a way to be yeah. um, appealing and attractive in a way that's not necessarily tropey, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And uh, to yes. the best of my abilities, I try to find that. And then before I, I set anything live, like I always check in with the model to go like, do these photos work for you? And uh, mm-hmm. if they say no, then then we have to uh, move away from them. And uh, that's totally fine. Like I'm happy to do it. Yeah, I love those sweats, by the way. I want oh, thank them. you. <laughs> <laughs> I will have to. I will have to send you a pair. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, absolutely. That's such a great point. I think it's one of the hardest things to do is shop for neutral uh, clothing that feels like it's not too specific to a certain idea of what my personality is supposed to be or so on. Sometimes I I, I step into like a guy's, um, you know, outlet and I think to myself, but come on, I love all these color palettes and I love all these patterns what happened and even yeah. if i think i i have a special relationship with like my tailor because if i think oh maybe i can remake this i can you know change the sleeves so they're a little bit smaller and yeah. it'll fit me just right and i love the bagginess anyhow but it's one of those things where i love and appreciate that you're taking that into account and you, you have a sensibility for it because those things only develop from there and it, it, just keep yourself aware of those things and I'm sure eventually you'll find this aha moment that apparently every other outlet hasn't. So oh, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> no, it's good uh, I, I appreciate that. it. It's it's good to hear that that the effort like it does mean something to people. Like when you just spend the extra time being a little bit more thoughtful, um, you know, because I think a lot of times. Like you don't realize if you're kind of of the privilege where they always have clothes that that fit me. I'm six foot, like a uh, typical yeah. body. Wow. Like it's not like, <laughs> like they always kind of have stuff that that is tailored to my build for the most part, except for pants. I have to get those tailored because my, my legs are kind of big, but yeah. I don't have to worry about, well, does like the colors that I like, are they offered in my, in my cut? Um, in mm-hmm. the way that I find flattering or way that I like. And so to think about that um, as a designer with my own brand, it, it definitely makes me feel good to know that that people do appreciate it. And it, it's kind of bittersweet because I wish it was more ubiquitous. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, with this one, I think I'm going to make it a little bit brighter. I love a good bright photo. Um, I don't know if this is at the, the warmth that I would like quite yet, but it's always tough. Like sometimes it'll look not too, too warm. Like, and then when I look at it on my other screen, it's very saturated. And I, I'm not always the biggest fan of like an oversaturation. And then that's when you kind of hit this crossroad of like, well, which one is it? Like, do you want it to be warm or do you want it to be uh, desaturated? And sometimes I just want both. I also love playing around with with uh, like the mid tones, like doing like tone splitting. Like this is so fun for me. Um, I think, especially with the midtones, like sometimes you can really tell like a fun little story in here. Like when you have some of the, uh, like the more pink or purple uh, midtones, it just makes things seem a little bit sweeter. I don't know. Like I just, I, I'm a fan of of what that looks like. But yeah, to all the, like the real like photo editors who are like, I can't believe, like I just, I literally just go off of like, does that look cool? And then I'll do like mm-hmm. control Z and then I'll go back and I'll just I'll literally flick back and forth. And then once I find settings that I kind of like, then you'll see me start to um, copy paste them onto to other photos. And another exercise I do, so if I'm not just gonna like manually go through each dial, sometimes I'll go through some of the photos that I took in the past and go, okay, like, well, what, how did I solve this problem before? And this is a photo actually I, I took when I was in Japan back in 2016. And I really just like, I love this haze. Ooh, yeah. Japan. Yeah. Yeah. It was <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I went there to, to, to go, uh, to fight when, uh, yeah, back in 2016. And that was, yeah. a, that was MMA? a really cool time. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, I had this like very street fighter esque 
like life fantasy where I was like, I'm just going to knock on the doors of all these MMA gyms in Japan and just see who wants to get busy. And that's literally what I did. Like I just Google mapped like my favorite five gyms and I went there and everybody was super cool and we got some work and it was, uh, yeah, was my awesome. wife and I went to watch her cousin play, uh, at an MMA tournament and in it we're also little kids so it was really really amazing yeah. the way the entire audience supported even from the kids to the women to the you know the big men that obviously have been like there for a long long time and it was just like so energetic it was amazing yeah yeah it's it's a it can be a good vibe it can also be kind of like a, a weird one sometimes if you stumble across the the wrong crowd but for the most part um I'm always really happy with how people conduct themselves at those events. And um, there's so much respect between fighters. And I think a lot of my um, my urgency to represent people equally, it's like if you look at MMA as a sport, there aren't very many other examples of sports that like women will frontline a main uh, like they'll be the main event and be like the title fight on the card and they'll take up 90 percent of the poster that other male fighters are, are like the undercard for and nobody thinks anything of it like you know joanna john jacek right. is one of the most respected fighters period not like because like not amongst women or not because of her weight class but just flat out period and when you train mma it's the same vibe in the gym like everybody just kind of gets it in that one way and so to kind of have mm -hmm. those barriers be not a problem or not be a hurdle uh i think it's a, a cultural vibe that I'm, I'm very much about absolutely yes. especially in sports it's it's not really the standard for other sports so it's absolutely notable no and like even when i fought like i shared the same locker room with female fighters like we were backstage like getting ready it, it didn't matter like i was so locked into you know what have i got myself into uh, that i didn't really have time to, to think about anything else like what on earth yeah. like i completely am about to ruin my own day but yeah this um this photo was from iceland my wife and i went for our honeymoon and uh again i think it's it's kind of probably becoming prevalent i really like like hazier photos um but this was um a series of photos that i think if we like revert back to the original settings very boring um and then I punch this up a lot. And sometimes I like just seeing like, okay, well, what would it look like in one of these pictures if I did the same? So let me, let me go back to, where was I? Like even here. Yeah, it has similar, it has a similar light condition. So you're able to play with that same filter. That's cool. Just adjust yeah. it. Yeah. And Ooh, like sometimes- it's really nice. Yeah, I'm a big fan of this. So we're gonna, gonna flag this five stars. I even like the bit. cones in the back being like this pungent orange. Yeah, yeah. But this definitely this I think what I like about this color treatment is that it's kind of hard to peg like what year did this take place? Um, if that makes any sense. Like it's a little bit more ambiguous. Yeah. Because some Sam photos says, I feel oh yeah, sorry. Oh. Sam says, uh, those colors adjustments made a huge difference. Yeah, it looks kind of different, but not in the way where it just starts to look like, you know, fantasy. It still relates to like yeah. an urban environment. Yeah, really it's grounded. Cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you uh, are familiar with, like, I, I love the Kendrick Lamar album, Good Kid, Mad City. <laughs> And I love like how on the front of the album, he has a picture, it looks like a Polaroid of like, I'm assuming his family's Dodge Caravan and just how grainy and beat up that photo is. And that was one of the first times that it kind of dawned on me, like you can be proud of something that isn't necessarily of the highest technical quality and still make art of it. Like it, it's Absolutely. very artfully placed. And I think um, like I, I'm not a fan of gatekeeping in any regard. And so the more things that like I can do and practices that I can embody that kind of validate more approaches to, to art and, and to photography or graphic design, I think are better. And uh, that album cover was very um, important to me in that regard where I was like, oh, somebody's somebody's taking this this type of photo and putting it front and center of what's a top 10 album of all time. Uh, in, in yeah. terms of rap. It's, it's really reminiscent to um, an, uh, one of my favorite bands, the Black Keys, 
the cover is also a nostalgic image of a vehicle. I don't know why we have such a fascination with like vehicles, trains, airplanes. It's like anything that takes us somewhere. It's like, let's take a photo of it. Uh, but yeah, that's really important that you keep in mind that, you know, it doesn't have to be always technically sound or a certain class level. In fact, those things are really kind of contradictory to being genuine to like the real life experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. One day I think I have this idea that one day we're going to look at like these iPhone four, three, whatever um, images. I, I have some of those and say, wow, like that is the film of today. You know, that is the, that nostalgia um, yeah. energy of maybe yeah. 2040 or 2060, who knows but yeah, the way technology much, moves. No, it's funny that you mentioned that because I had somebody interview me for a position as like a, a photography, like assistant photography, something. And they asked me what my thoughts were on like iPhone photography. But definitely like you ever have somebody ask you a question that feels like it's kind of coming from like a high tower. That's how it <laughs> felt. And I was like, listen, like if you're taking, if you're making stuff that speaks to you and speaks to other people, whatever tools you use to get there, like I'm, I'm fine with, like, there are definitely limitations, like with the iPhone, just in terms of like, well, what can I do with this image from like a technical standpoint, because so much is kind of pre-baked in, but you could shoot raw on an iPhone if you want to. And um, likewise with the Pixel, and they were not a fan of that response. And so kind of out of spite, I went back to my LG G3, which was like a phone I had back in 2014. And I was like, okay, <laughs> let me take all these photos from trips that I took and kind of use them in Lightroom and then kind of put them out there just to see how people receive them. And that album on the hands is like the one that people like the most. And it's like, nobody knows Ooh. every photo here. It? Yeah, yeah, I'll pull it up. But like every, actually it might be my, my Japan uh, trip. Hold on, let me. Yeah, I'm looking at your Behance um, here. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the Japan so Times. Oh yeah, the Japan by Queso. So every one of these photos I took on an LG G3 and yeah nobody that knows cool. that <laughs> but it's like you really can like uh, again like would you use this photography for like a super high resolution display like maybe maybe not like again there are limitations but i was able to with just my mobile device back in 2016 create something that moved me at least and uh again like i'm a big fan of like let's tear down these barriers to entry that's my brother by the way and he's a big fan of skateboarding and he was yeah, the inspiration I behind thought it was me. you no, 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 my <laughs> younger brother. Um, but he was a huge inspiration for me to uh, make a case of skateboard. And that ended up being like the best tool ever because I'm very shy. Like if I'm taking photos of myself, I need to be like away from people, which is why they're always like these big, vast open spaces. And then just me, like I need to be able to cook for a half hour unbothered. But when people do drive by, if I have my skateboard out, I can just kind of pretend like, yo, I'm making a skate video and everyone just <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, that's what he's doing here. And they just, you oh, know, take anything over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the, the skateboard has been like the, like an actual tool, but yeah, this is, um, I'm, I like, I really love this album. This trip was was awesome um this was a really really cool time this yeah. might be my favorite photo of the bunch that's so cool yeah if you guys um you're welcome to go check out his behance i think it's super cool to be able to go and appreciate uh the creatives that are out there um and kind of leave a connection uh, i make a lot of connections on behance and i've gotten a lot of really cool um connections with people that are international which to me is like in itself is amazing because for a while we couldn't travel that much and i feel like yeah. being able to use the internet for all of the amazing resources that it has is is the name of the game so definitely yeah. check out behance and and go follow keza yeah and uh i think one of the first projects i put up on there when somebody liked it for the first time i was like who's who's that and then i looked and they had all these followers and they were like a legit artist and i was like oh my like because I am self-taught and like I, when I started case, I, I really had no clue what I was doing. So to just get that validation of like, good luck on me, like you're onto something like people who are more established, don't realize like how impactful that can be in a good way. And uh, if I wasn't on the hands, I don't think I would have had that moment where I was like, okay, somebody who's really in the weeds here saw some value in what I'm attempting to do even though i don't necessarily know what that is or how to get there and uh yeah whatever um opportunities 
that uh, I can take now as somebody with a, a little skin in the game to validate others. Like I, I definitely, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of it. Um, but yeah, Lex is just the coolest. <laughs> She's so cool. Yeah, we're just a fan of her here. Yeah, she she is just the coolest. She's so hi Mar nice. hi Mervin. Thank you for joining us. So you're in you you do graphic design. Yes. Uh, so I um, it's very hard to call myself a multidisciplinary when I have an accent, but. Uh, I like uh, saying that I'm a visual storyteller because I think much like you, I love focusing on just like the different stories that surround me and how I respond to them in a, a creative, uh, expressive way. I think my yeah. medium is visual above all, but that medium uses different vehicles. Sometimes it's camera, sometimes it's designed like vector vector items, or some nowadays it's a bit of immersive technology. I've been really intrigued by that. Um, and video too is very self-taught as well. So oh, I wow. love this new uh, community that we have where like it's, it's not a rare to run into someone who has apply the discipline of stepping into spaces like this, like Behance or, you know, YouTube, wherever we can access education from other creatives. And that's yeah. what I've done. And I, I'm going to go on a whim here and say that you've done plenty of that too. Um, the internet is a wonderful resource. And so, yeah. I, yeah, I do a little bit of all of that. And I also live stream here on Behance and it's a little bit of, um, of of everything that I just mentioned, illustration, doodling yeah. on the iPad, just having a good old chat with with people out here on Behan. So it's yeah. a lot of fun. No, you're doing a great job, and thank you so much for being such a, a great host. Um, and sorry thank that you. I'm not more familiar with um with all the awesome stuff that you've been up to, but I will definitely oh, get up to fine. speed. Yeah. <laughs> so I do I do have like little presets from other photo shoots that I've done. Like I'll make like if I find like like a, a setting that I'm Ooh. really, really into, I'll save it. And then sometimes I'll just literally just like flick through just like we were before just go, okay, like do any of these jump out to me? And if the chat has any of like that they're a fan of, let me know. But these are all from like older shoots. So and sometimes, organized. Yeah, thank you. Which is your favorite? My favorite? Or like you use the most maybe. <laughs> Last summer, it was this one. Um, there's another, um, I did like a shoot for, with like an Olympic lifter named Faith. And she is the most intense person I've, I've ever been around. And she's, she's like 19. And I was so like, this person's awesome. Um, and so the the photos from that shoot were uh, really, really impactful in, in that way. And um, when I was doing the, the photo shoot, I was at this like weightlifting like this olympic lifting gym but it's really like a barn and it was mm -hmm. all women who were olympic lifters and none of them knew me besides my contact there and so like i'm trying to get all these really cool angles with my camera and it was uh you know a, a little embarrassed to say it was, it was like the first time i really stopped to consider like what i'm asking of these women who are lifting two three hundred mm -hmm. pounds overhead to trust this stranger with a camera at weird angles to just not be on towards and i really value that as a photographer like that inherent mm -hmm. trust is really really important to me and um yeah i just like in the moment i was like oh my goodness like i, I am asking a lot of these athletes to perform and to trust me and they have no clue where these photos are going and so that that photo shoot was was really really important to me and, and i love the photos from that from that shoot yeah, do you kind of build a a sense of trust of like the, the person, but also like what the action is, like what's happening. It's there's no no better way of being present than photographing sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um I think the best photographers, because I'm really reluctant to call myself one, to be honest with you. Like I think the best photographers can like have a clear idea and then execute on it, like, you know, at a high degree of of um of accuracy and i just kind of like i'm a, like a stumble upon photographer like there are moments like this one where it's like i can't believe 
I was around for this and then I happened to take a photo of it. Like they're all moments oh, that yeah. happened to me, less so yeah. than they're like these planned things. And so I, I, I'm reluctant to let go of that feeling because every time like I'm, I'll go through and forgot that I took this or this picture occurred. And it's like, man, like that was a special second and it's right here. That's I get to beautiful. keep it forever. <laughs> I love, I love calling a picture that a picture occurred. It just, it just, appear yeah no but that's how i i feel because it's like if you would if i had set out to take this picture i would have come back empty hand <laughs> like that's just kind of yeah. how my my brain works but that i was able and present enough in the moment to just hit the the shutter on, on my camera and, and this was the result it just it feels so accidental like i i'm reluctant to take any credit for it really and i love like i can spend hours uh in lightroom just kind of playing around with with these but i think I was playing around with the mid-tones before and these ones seem to be much warmer. Yeah. I think I was a fan of like the more, the pinkish red ones for some reason, those were speaking to me. And, so oh. we have a question here from yeah. Mervin, which I think we kind of touched on a little bit, but he is really curious um, on, on how to organize or the original and edited photos. Uh, maybe we're talking about like the Lightroom albums or what is your workflow for organizing your final images uh, once they're they're edited. Yeah. And also Anika says hi Torin. Oh hi. Um, so yeah, there there are a couple of approaches that I I have. Uh, one one thing I love about Lightroom is you can always revert back to the original. So you could spend hours on something, duplicate it, and then go, okay, well, I want the original one kind of right next to it. So um, I'll have the original one and then I'll just revert to original settings. As far as like storage goes, if it's like a big, big shoot, I'll have, uh, I'll export from my SD card into like a giant folder and I'll call it like raw images and I'll name it after the shoe. And then I'll go through each one of those images and copy paste it to another folder called selects, like the ones I like the most. And then from selects, I'll import those into Lightroom and then I'll export those as like selects treated and then selects treated and cropped and then so on and so forth. Like, and then if I put my branding on, I'll have like a folder called selects treated, cropped and branded. And uh, I'll just go through each one of those iterative folders. And then you end up having a ton of redundancies and it takes up a lot of space. But um, to me, it's it's worth it just because again, like I do revisit the past so much. Mm -hmm. um, I would be heartbroken if like I rendered a photo out at like a lower web resolution and then just deleted the original and never could go back to it for Absolutely. a different use. Yeah. Yeah, I, that makes me think also, it's fair to say that at some point, once your, your company grows exponentially, which I have my uh, backing on, I will, because yes. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> um, you know, you hope to be able to delegate those files to somebody that can find them. So I think that organization is, I, I mean, as a graphic designer, I'm always like drooling over somebody who organizes their folders. It's like, yes, oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it can be tough. Like once you start sharing with people and like just having like a common naming scheme, uh, like for like, I'll have the brand and then the shoot and then the photo and then the like the aspect ratio and then where the placement's supposed to go. Cause having to yeah. send them off to clients, like I have a few clients that like to post themselves. And early mm -hmm. on, I would send the client like the photo cropped in a certain way and, and yeah. with all the other uh, little tricks that I did in Lightroom. And then they would go onto Instagram and like put their own filters on it and then crop it funny. And it drove oh. me nuts. So I would be like, okay, <laughs> like let that me hurts. just organize this for you because I <laughs> like I cannot. It's like making somebody like a beautiful full meal and then they just squirt ketchup all over it it's oh. like, why, like why did you do and this then they, it's like <laughs> they mix it <laughs> yeah it's like i plated this for hours i used the tweezers like how dare you i feel that way when they add salt before trying it <laughs> it's like don't that's, add that salt is, that's Try so i would i would slap the fork out of their hand and say no <laughs> Not yeah, I'm either. totally referring to my wife right now. So she, oh. has, she adds oh. salt <laughs> to everything. No, I'm I'm half Italian, and uh, one night for some reason I couldn't find um, pasta sauce, and my wife just went to squirt barbecue sauce on pasta, and I like <laughs> died. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> like what? What are we doing? Like you, we, this is illegal. Pretty amazing, kind of. <laughs> Yeah, I'm uh, borderline. <laughs> it's uh it's uh, I don't know. But yeah, she's like, oh, Annika's here laughing with, with us. 
<laughs> Annika, how I'm do you a... make your pasta? <laughs> Very important. Yeah, I don't want to lose all the shadows and details. So when we go back, yeah, this might be a little exposed. But yeah, I love that this shirt has some wear and tear to it. There are other shirts from the shoot that I, I think also have some uh, like wear. Like I train in the shirt, like I box in the shirt, dude, MMA rounds in it. And so I, I had the worn legs beforehand. I was like, if this, if this smells like a dude in his mid thirties uh, who's doing too much, I apologize. And she goes, it's, it's all right. <laughs> what is that store? There's a store that sells like second, secondhand uh, but it's like it's particularly shirts and then they'll find like Tupac shirts like shirts just from way way back and it's like you just think oh my god such a treasure but also it has that level of wear and tear yeah. it's kind of interesting that we still find that valuable so yeah it's nice there's something about it sometimes it just looks too fresh it's just this it's not the vibe you're going for yeah sometimes you just like it's like oh this had this had a life and I don't know what that life was, but it went through it. And uh, it's cool to kind of inherit uh, or inherit that uh, that feel. Oh, Sean. Hi, Sean. Sean says, love a photo occurrence. Ooh, so fancy. Uh, shot a, I shot a corporate meeting, all candidates, and ended up with one of my best shots ever. I didn't expect that. Yeah. What do you think about yeah. candid shots? Uh, see, that's, a, I'm a huge fan of candid shots, uh, especially like, so if I have a client that has like a CrossFit brand, like and I just, they send me shirts to go model. Sometimes it's so much quicker for me just to do it myself. And the photos of me that I hate the least are the ones that are just like, I'm looking around, kind of confused, like waiting for something to happen. Like, I feel like if you're not a professional model, you when you're candid, you're relaxed. And that's like, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Like if you're nervous yes. and you're sitting up a little too straight, I think that there are some posture cues that you don't realize when you're trying that when they aggregate, kind of remove you further and further from like a natural look. And when you're looking at it as an audience, you pick up on it, even if you can't quantify it. So candidates are like a great way to just go, okay, like nobody knows I'm here. I'm just gonna blend in, you yeah. do you. And I'll like, just trust me to find stuff that works. And that's why I think like wedding photos are so great, especially when people are coming out mm -hmm. of their ceremony, because the last thing you, could give uh, any care about is like like the photographer <laughs> yeah. in front of you, but you just have this natural jubilation that just completely oh shines God, through. Yeah, yeah those are the best smiles. Um, yes. And so I, I'm a, I'm a I huge fan I always tell people that, candidates. that like, if you don't know how to pose or oftentimes somebody who isn't a model is in front of the camera says, I don't know what to do. I just say like one, the first and the best thing you can do is just like laugh and smile and truly mean it because that nobody can replicate that nobody can replicate that way that you smile and it is beautiful as it can get and even if yeah. you don't think so because you're not used to it's like hearing your own voice it always sounds a little weird uh, believe me we we have like a a way of recognizing facial expressions that is you know since our birth so we see somebody smile genuinely we're just gonna be like wow beautiful absolutely yeah. beautiful so no, one way to look a, absolutely gorgeous without photoshop that's such a that's such a great insight um i always ask like the the subject like what do you do today just kind of like to get them talking and then like you'll see the guard come down like a little bit and then we'll roll from there um but yeah any exercises you have like that and sometimes I'll, like i'll try to assure the subject like i might have you in a pose that's a little bit more esoteric like where you're pointing and you're looking down and like you're just in a position that doesn't feel natural, but I'll show them right after I take the photo, like just in the frame, this ended up looking cooler than you, like than it felt like doing, like especially right. with people's eyes. Like sometimes I'll be like, okay, like put your chin to your shoulder, but then with just your eyes, try to look over your other elbow. And you're like my forehead, like my face hurts, <laughs> but it ends up looking more normal than if like you actually just kind of rested where your eyes naturally go. Cause sometimes it just can be a little weird, but yeah, there are those like little tricks of the lens that mm -hmm. as a model just feel so unnatural, but end up communicating in a way that's a little bit cooler. I don't know if I'm a fan of this treatment on this photo and I already lost it, but I do want to go back to some of these, these presets here. I do love Delta. That's always a good <laughs> one because it feels really warm, but sometimes the blues are a little too saturated. 
Um, uh, Torin, as you explore the different filters, I have a few uh, hellos here on the chat. Thanks everyone yeah, yeah. for joining us. Um, uh, so Sean says, <laughs> Sean joined us on the question of, about the pasta. He says he's a fan of pesto and I am a fan of pesto too, actually. Yeah, so, same here. Pine nuts though are very expensive. <laughs> And yeah. they're so hard to find in a grocery store. Like I've had meltdowns. Like we're like, where are we keeping all the pine nuts? <laughs> like all that work for them to still Meltdown. need twelve dollars for like half a cup. Yeah, it's a <laughs> it's a lot. And then Marvin here says, um, I like doing microphotography. Do you have any advice for that? Um, so that's interesting to get even closer as opposed to like, you know, just like um or your initial shots, but like, I'll, I think microphotography doesn't tend to get as much attention sometimes. I'm, I'm unfamiliar with, with what microphotography is. I guess like macro photography, uh, insects. Oh, are oh, oh, getting so like, really uh, close. I imagine for yeah. your clothes, it could be like a good way to translate the fabric. Yeah. Um, I have some shots that are, are definitely closer, but, um, again, like people who get like up close up close, especially if you're doing insects, I breathe way too heavy. So that's like not a career path for me. Like I would just <laughs> upset the animals. Um, but as far as like fabrics go, uh, there are definitely some shots that I took later on. Yeah, that were much, much closer. And this photo shoot was pretty cool in that um, I've always, because I, I'm, again, I'm self-taught, I've always relied on just like the automatic settings. And this was the first time where I took all the training wheels off. It was like, okay, I'm gonna put this into focus myself. I'm gonna set the mm -hmm. white balance myself, like all of this I'm gonna do on my own. And so that was really cool. But I'm like, when I'm at a shoot, I have a tendency, it's like a bad habit to kind of rush. And this forced me to really slow down. In between Ooh, that's things. a good one. Yeah. Yeah, that hold uh the the close-up of of the title is really interesting so yeah it could be a good use of like just getting a little closer yeah no this is this one's cool and you can tell like i again like i train in this shirt um lex is a just a champ for allowing herself to wear one of my old nasty t-shirts but <laughs> this shirt uh meant a lot the hold hands one um like i i saw last summer that there were so many shirts that had captions on it that really felt like they were more for Instagram. Like you ever see a t-shirt, like who would wear that out? But it photos well, it's like this caption seems very intentional. It's like you're wearing it for a different audience than the people you're actually in front of. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, if I'm gonna have a t-shirt that has a declarative on it, like what would be like my commandment? Like what would I ask people to do? Uh, and so I was like, oh, okay, commandment, cool. So I. I uh, downloaded like the same font, like the Bible script uh, standard. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, I'm just gonna ask that people hold hands. And uh, so that was like my declarative shirt for last summer. And I had it made on like a, like a champion uh, shirt. So it's got this boxy look. And I like, I like a boxier cut t-shirt. And so these shirts have been my absolute favorite. Um, and I have one in black and white mm -hmm. and uh, white and black. And yeah, these, these photos are, are some of my, uh, or this shirt is like of my absolute favorite. And I, I wear it all the time and I should probably buy more for myself. Um, but I like that like weather cause it's a heavy shirt. Like I like that it's beaten up now. And yeah. uh, hopefully that that translates a little bit with this photo. What I might end up doing, like I love the way that this blue ended up working, but I might do the, I love the new masking tools for select, select subject. When I'm in Photoshop, that lasso whoops my ass sin. I am the worst at it. Oh my God. <laughs> I get so mad trying to lasso with my mouse. Like, why can't I? And this, this has tool, been amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the absolute, it's literally magic. Like I'm so it's grateful. It's pretty new, it. but it's yeah. really good. Yeah. It's incredible. Um, and I then I feel like they like, listened, they listened to us or like, we, we just want to stay in Lightroom. We don't <laughs> want to jump to Photoshop. <laughs> No, I, I I have a question for you. you. You probably you might know better than I do. Can you export this to Photoshop with the layer mask included? It's like a separate oh, layer in the Photoshop file. I'm not entirely sure, actually, but I would imagine that's a great step uh, if yeah. they haven't implemented it. I wonder if in the in the three dots at the very bottom, if it gives you an option to do that to export. You see it next to show overlay. Um, oh, the ellipsis. 
here? The ellipsis, yeah, but on on the inside. The one to the, on the you see show overlay and then there's an ellipsis. I imagine that, that could be some over. options. Oh here, yeah, yeah. Yes. So color overlay, mm, overlay settings. No, but I really like that concept. I wonder if there's an option. If anybody yeah. knows in the chat, it might have been if we thought about it, that might have been already a step. Yeah. Otherwise, this is uh, a nice intel for the coders of, of Adobe. Yeah, because there are definitely some times where it's like, man, like I would love this clipping mask, which is like kind of perfect to insert mm -hmm. something that may not be the photo itself, like a texture or a pattern. Or right. um, one of the things I had to teach myself how to do pretty early on was to do a displacement map because I had so many mm -hmm. clients that were I was designing shirts for. And they're like, can you just make it look like it's on a T-shirt? And I was like, okay, sure. Like, I have no clue what that even means. Right. And then I started like doing the different blend modes in Photoshop. And I was like, why doesn't it look wrinkled? And so six hours later, I learned the term displacement map. And oh, uh, nice. now I love making those. Yeah, but it would be nice sometimes yeah. to just be like, okay, I can start here and then make my own displacement map using the subject select and Lightroom, which is so accurate. Because yeah. yeah, that lasso it's in so, Photoshop so accurate. Me out. I mean, <laughs> the sensei, just the text, everything i mean this is a challenging image because she has this uh, the curly hair uh but also strands of hair like just floating about that i mean a lifetime ago feels like but when i first started photoshop it was just like a nightmare and you would be the coolest if you could figure that out and spend yeah. all the hours to be able to like you know just mask it in a certain way um definitely not the pen tool the pen tool will not do that and so this ability of the sensei being able to detect that immediate um subject selection that's that's amazing yeah it's yeah and so no it's it's huge like because sometimes like when i'm doing like the the minus uh subject select in photoshop i'll hit like a, like a pixel and then 10 percent of the subject select just disappears <laughs> and i'll get yeah. I, i'll get heated so this is this yeah. is so useful i know like, exactly I, I love it yeah <laughs> you're like no like what am i touching to make all this disappear it just uh you know it can't just be me so it's i'm glad that we uh share each other's pain in, in that regard but yeah I'm a, I'm a big fan of of this i don't know how the chat feels about this photo but i'm gonna flag this one um, i really like it i love the perspective yeah. on this one and that like my focus goes directly to the to the friends of the unresolved which is yeah so cool. yeah which yeah which is my uh, apparel brand name um i love unresolved like lines on graphs and so when i started yeah. uh, my apparel brand i was like well anybody who's a friend of mine is a friend of some of the things that i i like and so friend of the unresolved because i feel like there's so much in our own lives that you know we don't get to uh, put a, a a cap on quite yet and so while i'm on this journey and i'm just getting started like it's people who are supporting me through however they can uh means a lot and so i wanted to name my my apparel brand after the the friends who've, who've gotten me this far to begin with Ooh, um lovely. yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, you. I, you know we're we're here um celebrating pride month and uh i love i love what you just said there because sometimes it all it takes is an ally to allow you to feel comfortable within yourself and be able to be expressive and how can we, we be creative if we don't have those outlets to just completely yeah. be honest and follow our own uh narrative and our own gut feeling right it's not beautiful yeah. so yeah. now it goes a long long way um so this is a shout out to all of you allies out there bravo yeah yeah that's <laughs> um I, I'm, I'm curious what your feelings are towards how the month is demonstrated at like a corporate marketing level just because you're so into the weeds in, in this field yeah. like do you see things that feel disingenuous or are you encouraged just by like any motion in this direction how, how do you feel um about it? in terms of pride is that where you're specifically? yeah yeah Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. If you're comfortable, so, sorry, I probably should have asked oh, you. Um, your... I'm not. I'm not uncomfortable. So it's okay. really interesting because um, uh, for me, I live in Texas and okay. in Austin, Texas. So Austin is so uh, friendly and so in love with just people being different. So I've seen so many rainbows everywhere, beautiful notes of just love 
everybody and like love yourself and be yourself and all these wonderful statements that from a graphic design standpoint, all I can think of, of is how does that affect the community when there's statements of love as opposed to statements of hostility? Um, yeah. I I grew up in Miami, Florida, which unfortunately I have to say this, but there is very little um, uh celebration it without if it did it doesn't involve a, a party or other you know like there's there's a lot of benefit uh, you're benefiting from um celebrating this thing as opposed to just mm. i just want to i just want to be for you guys here for you guys i'm going to show up on i'm going to show a sticker on the door and tell you that you're welcome here and that it's okay to yeah. show your love you know so seeing that 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 stark difference here and seeing the celebration that happens everywhere if it, it warms my heart i remember the first time that i genuinely saw a uh, a rainbow flag and i mm. i thought to myself well cuz i've i've seen them many many times before but i for, for the first time that i saw it and i felt a sense of community because i was accepting myself too so it was yeah. like wow that that little flag up there made me feel just a little bit more comfortable to hold uh, my wife's, my it was, she was my girlfriend back then, uh, her hand in the street. So that's, it's so silly, but at the same time, it's not because not isn't that the point of um, everything we make it, 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 it involves some kind of uh, action or emotion that gets translated over to the person who experiences it. And that's when it's beautiful, right? Like that's yeah. when it kind of does its whole journey. So um, I'm still in kind of a developing my opinion on it, I would say, um, yeah. because my eye is just browsing and seeing things for the first time in a space that is actually embracing it, uh, pride. And yeah. I imagine it's more like this in other states. I mean, um, the Castro District in San, San Francisco is amazing. <laughs> it's like yeah, so much really, fun. Uh, yeah, I, I I was there and it was just like, whoa, this is so cool. And it's all over the place. And it's statements of like, just um, so so talking about conviction, right? Statements of conviction. And so that's just beautiful. This just brings me back to, to just all your concepts. And I love that. You, I mean, it makes a, a difference when you're designing something with a sense of conviction because you don't never know who is going to wear something or post put a poster up on their wall that's going to kind of motivate them for the day i mean yeah it can make a world of a difference in that respect is there anything that you're not seeing in how pride month month is approached that you wish that you saw more of or some form of representation that you think hasn't uh gotten its its due diligence mm. uh, i i don't know if i have a fair uh response since yeah I haven't been too in the depths of of marketing and social media as of late, I, I, and and that's kind of refreshing in a way. Yeah. But say say if I have experienced a lapse in the past, it would be just representing uh, for me. This is this is a uh, close to me is the Latinx community and mm. their perspective on being. Uh, in the LGBTQ plus community, because our experience is completely different coming from very, very, very conservative families. And that tends to just change the experience of coming out all together. So uh, again, allies are just become almost like a chosen family and just such so much love that uh, it involves to be um, open-minded, <laughs> just yeah. open-minded to somebody else's experience. and. And the same front of um, uh, educating myself on subjects that matter to you, for example, or subjects that you're taking on in your brand, um, to be able to be inclusive or be representative of yeah. uh, the Black community. All of those things were things I educated myself on. And I realized this is a lot of work, but my gosh, did I need to do this? Like I just yeah. needed to do this. So I love that brands are taking on that narrative more and more because it's less hush hush and it allows me to learn in different avenues. Uh, you know, yeah. you, be it wearing a shirt, like sure. I know why I stand for this shirt. Yeah. yeah. So no, it's really it's, cool uh, stuff. Yeah, it's it's really refreshing to hear. I'm I'm always uh uh really curious as to what people's experiences are with with um how they feel 
their identities are are portrayed um, by other hands. And uh, yeah, yeah it, it can be frustrating at times and heartbreaking at others. And then when it does work, it's like, oh, like, like you said, very refreshing. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah I, keep it, keep it up because that's the right outlet. Just kind of follow your gut on that respect. And even if it sometimes it translates into our post editing, you know, we start to be like, how, you know, why would I make this? look uh you know scary if it doesn't have a meaning or why would i make yeah. it look super saturated if it's not really me um yeah how how sustainable is that right yeah no for sure um yeah that's all such great insight like it, it really does affect your approach to things like especially from like a connotative viewpoint like um you can have a photograph of a black male and if it's in two different sets of hands have them be treated in two very different ways um oh yes you know That's yeah so like true. A, yeah like sometimes like just in color grading like people don't realize that they're making somebody darker and maybe you know we're not thinking about where this photo is being used and you know this idea of you know um not being mindful of maybe the the historical context for the, um, the identity of the subject and, and the photos that you've taken can be tough. And I don't begrudge people who are aware, but I, I always like to think that it's not um, who's in the room who said yes, it's who wasn't in the room to say no. And I've definitely like jumped in front of brands making a few really bad ideas before that I know yeah. came from a really good place. Just mm. well-intentioned isn't always well-informed. And um, it, it's yeah. great to hear that that you've got your your finger on the pulse of, of what's working and, and what isn't. And uh, yeah. Yeah, Likewise on your it, end. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm trying. I, you know, I'm I am a constant work in progress. And uh, yeah. last year for Pride Month, are we all? Uh, yeah, like I wanted. <laughs> well, yeah, no, but I'm a little behind. But I uh, I wanted to like I'm a big fan of pledging time, um, <laughs> and and donating time to things. And uh, there were a couple of of LGP or LBGTQ plus uh, resources <laughs> that. It's a mouthful. Um, yeah, that, well, no, I, I should do a better job of it. So my, my apologies, <laughs> but uh, they were they were offering kind of not like classes, but like mentorships and just some some time that I could spend. And um, I really do like doing stuff like that where I'm like I'm learning in real yes. time from people who are are comfortable with with sharing because it, it can be tough. Mm-hmm. Like having been the only person of color in a in a business before, sometimes you are the one who has to answer a lot of questions. And while I'm comfortable doing so. It's not necessarily yeah. somebody else's job to like educate me on things that I should uh, probably be aware of. Um, so mm-hmm. I never take for granted when people are comfortable with it, explaining it and being patient with me and generous with their experiences yes, so that they can I- explain it. But yeah, I, I I am a big fan of this picture. I did a, a hat for Kesa. Uh, my wife's whole family are huge Buffalo Bills fans. And I don't like football, to be honest with you. Uh, but I was like, if I'm going to like football, I'm going to do it on my own terms and design some stuff around it. And uh, especially with everything that just happened in Buffalo, I was like, okay, I need to make sure that this hat is is in this shoe. It's actually the one I'm wearing right now. And uh, Lex being from Buffalo and not too far from um, where that shooting was, I just it's crazy sometimes, like you know how how much can be in a photo without anybody knowing because there's just no way to convey that context. Um, but yeah, this one in particular means a lot to me, just having Thurston in the background, you know, literally on the corner of where I grew up. And um, I told Lex during the shoot, I was like, this is literally my dream, like to be able to represent my street in a, in a way that's uh, positive and strong and, and thoughtful. And then to have you here just kind of like- Powerful. The, yeah, just so powerful and so focused um, and wearing, clothes that have lived the life for the past year of me while I'm trying to figure out because when you start off on your own as a freelancer or as a contract hire, you don't realize it, but while you're learning new skills and a technical sense towards your your art, you're also learning yeah. like how to run a business. And man, like there are yeah. so many lessons that nobody tells you. And I've bumped my head on just about all of them, but uh, <laughs> it can be dawning at times, like, especially cause I'm pretty naive. Like you wouldn't, I, you wouldn't believe some of the horror stories of people who, you know, leave you with a bag, you know, like you do all the work for them and then they just don't pay you or uh, stuff mm-hmm. like that gets weird. And, you know, there are protections that you can put in place for yourself 
uh, legally, yeah. but until you've made that mistake, it's like it wouldn't occur to you, or at least it didn't occur to me to kind of think with those things in mind. So it's, you, it's been a lot to learn. Yeah. Do you ever include like any, I know in the info section of Lightroom, do you ever include any metadata to oh. make sure people, like it involves your name um, so that if things do get, you know, kind of taken advantage of, then you have like somewhere to just make a make a remark this is actually mine because <laughs> i know a um, lot of people are familiar with uh the signature but maybe not so much about the metadata behind it all i have been recently for like especially videos that i output um for photos i haven't always done the best job and like in a weird way like i've always been so confident like hard work always rises to the top and so if somebody like really really loves something that i've done and they're wondering like where it came from no matter where they stumble upon it if they really dig it it will cross paths and uh i, I have not always been too worried about people stealing like my ideas or my concepts just because i feel mm -hmm. like i'll just keep having them um and so <laughs> that's that's been both like a good like modus operandi and also a bad one because i've definitely had <laughs> some pitch decks that i sent the clients that were like well we're going to go in a different direction and i more or less saw what i pitched them uh just with somebody else but that 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 definitely happens but no to answer your question yeah. i've not done a good job with with yeah. using that that metadata tool uh here in it's the interesting language. all the lessons we learn right like oh just, my goodness yeah yeah, yeah. so is, so can can you just um as we kind of uh get closer here towards yeah, the yeah. end um can you uh give us a summary on how we're going to uh move forward tomorrow with yeah, our yeah. project yeah yeah so to, tomorrow um i'll go uh when we're offline i'll finish kind of color grading these and then tomorrow we'll um start bringing them into adobe uh creative cloud express just to start doing those like social mm -hmm. placements and getting these ready to kind of launch um on my social channels and just kind of talk through maybe we'll do like an instagram um post and then like an instagram story post and then kind of walk you guys through how iterative i am with that with just where i place the the logos and then um maybe we'll even post a few while we're live and, and take it from there um and if there is time maybe walk through like an editorial or, or something along the lines because i love putting together editorials it's like my absolute yeah. favorite um but yeah this is what do you use for the editorial incredible. and design we're still, we still have time. Don't worry. We still oh, okay. Yeah, no, I was like, oh, shoot. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, you use InDesign for editorials. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah that's, yeah. that's the place to be. Um, do you use Adobe Express? Yep. So it's, I'll oh, okay. switch between the two, like depending on, ah. on what I need. Like if I need like a quick social placement, InDesign seems a little robust for that. Mm -hmm. um, so if it's like, man, like I have an idea, I've got a photo, let me just create a project and uh, express. And one of the things I love the most about express is that it really lowers the barrier to entry for people who are just getting started. Mm -hmm. So with like a lot of the students that I work with now who are in Rochester's inner city, you know, there are a lot of hurdles to clear financially if you want to do this even kind of as a hobby, just like you have yeah. the equipment to take the photos you want. Do you have the computer to run Lightroom in a way that's, you know, workable? Um, but with Express, everything's kind of handled offline or like remotely through like their server. So you can get into some, um, you know, ground level graphic design and, and uh, you know, editorial design and, and placement mm -hmm. design without needing to have everything and i think that that's right. uh, i can't overstate how important that is to to make it more ubiquitous like I, i'm a huge fan of the democratization of skills and and assets yes. and the more people who have access to stuff the better yeah also it's just being able to have those creative assets to communicate your brand is really wonderful um actually yeah. um this reminds me there's always a, a opportunity for you to replay any of these videos on Behance or YouTube where you can find other creators like for example Voodoo Val who actually um, uh, worked on a project of with um, Adobe Express uh, oh, wow. for social posts so you can also check that out um, yeah I, I love being able to check out the replays although we'd lose the the really cool factor of joining the chat so definitely say hello in the chat if you're just join us or if um, you're ready to join us tomorrow, make sure to keep up with that. 
uh, yeah, as we continue here with uh, Torin on all of the different Lightroom photos and um, we'll continue editing. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are there any questions from the chat or? Um, oh, let me I check them out. I know Hassan said, Hassan said, uh, hi, and then I want to download Photoshop in Windows 10 for free. Can you please help me for free? <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, uh, you don't have to get the entire Adobe Creative Cloud. I think that there's different uh, subscription methods, right? Like, yeah. I, I have the entire Adobe Creative Cloud because I can't help Likewise. myself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like once you learn one, it's so easy to learn the next and it just becomes like candy. So um, definitely check out Adobe and see if there's different options for you. Um, I know they have a free trial also. Actually, Sam just touched on that. So they have a free trial uh, and then a subscription based, which uh, also unveils the different features once you're subscription based. I know with Lightroom, you have accessibility to some uh, filters that yeah. uh, were created within Lightroom to help for situations like being able to yeah. edit skin color uh, so that you're able to stay true to uh, your subjects or um, uh, uh, color and kind of take care, have some presets uh, there so that you don't have to kind of start from scratch. Those yeah. are available within the subscription. I'm rolling through them right now, I think. The premium presets? Yeah. Yeah, these are cool. Yeah, those are cool. And then there, there's also other cool, more oh, creative like ones, one. like cinematic and uh, yeah, sometimes oh. I use them. Yeah, sometimes I use them as like a base of foundation so yeah. that you you're still able to edit them they're not fixed in place yeah. so you can always kind of go from there and say man i don't i want it a little cooler or actually i want it more contrasted and at yeah least I, I love a good point. launching point yeah that's uh that's huge i actually I just cinematic cn11 i am feeling oh <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it's tough though because i'm looking at this cool. on two different screens and on the screen in front of me <laughs> it's not so saturated and then on the other one it's super saturated and I'm, oh that's like, so tricky yeah, so it's like, okay, which which version are people seeing on their feeds? Because they either think that I'm like dead inside or super candy, and I don't know, <laughs> I don't know which one to do. Uh, yeah, but yeah, to. by tomorrow I will have this problem solved for sure. But uh, <laughs> even just going through, like, just emotionally, like my um, like my thought process for the you know the project and Lex and making sure she's comfortable with the photos and how she wears the clothes. Um, again, these are the the um, remember our first date shorts like um, actually I think we went we touched up this photo this is an outfit I wear all the time those these are actually my glasses um, and I thought it was really cool to see Lex wearing well a I, I have I've had the shirt since 2016 at the at least the earliest but there's where is that outfit because I've worn it I love this fit I wear it all the time. And so to see somebody else in it, and I was like, Lex, you're so much cooler than me. It's like, I feel like finally, like the captain of the football team's here and I'm like a replacement player. And now yeah. like, I have to go back to the bench in my own outfit. Like I, I've worn oh. this every day for a year and you've made it look way cooler your first attempt. And I'm kind of upset about it, but God bless. Very comfy too. Yeah, no. And that's like my thing. Like I love being comfortable. I think it was Jerry Lorenzo who kind of came up with this concept of like, um like american like luxury leisure and uh mm. like the whole fear of god vibe is very much that and he's been a, a huge um point of inspiration for me just in validating um myself as a creative uh and having mm. the nerve to call myself an artist and uh validating my approach where like I, i'm so conviction driven and uh, I really do like honor like my my gifts and talents and try to put those at the forefront and you know where I can't do a good job or I can't do something to the best of my abilities like I am willing to say no to a project and uh, a lot of those cues I got from listening to to Jerry Lorenzo um, you know I think I stumbled upon him back in 2018 because he was coming out with the fear of god sneaker with nike and it's this brand new silhouette i don't know if you're into sneakers at all but uh a lot of designers will get like an existing silhouette of sneaker to like put their own spin on almost never does somebody get their own sneaker mold from the ground up so like you'll mm -hmm. see like designers design like a jordan one or jordan four 
but to have like a completely brand new silhouette almost never happens. And he got one for his first collaboration with Nike. And when they was asking him about it, he was like, I honored this so much that if I couldn't do it to the best of my abilities with my gifts wow. and my talents, I was willing to say no. And uh, so that sneaker ended up being like, it's my favorite sneaker of all time. And I have four pairs of them, but just kind of having like, somebody believe in themselves that much where they'd walk away from Nike because they could do it on their own terms it was such a liberating idea. And I didn't even mm. realize how important that would be moving forward. Cause I, again, like I was working at a different agency when I uh, stumbled upon that interview. And now it's like, that is with, like woven into the DNA of the case. just that I'm going to do this yeah. to the best of my abilities with my own skill set. And I'll, like I said, I'll, I'll say no to stuff that that doesn't live up to, to that standard. Yeah. And it's really interesting to stay in tune with what, what is that standard for you or what, what does it mean for you so that, you know, okay, I can detect this doesn't coincide with that. So I can say no and be happy and be okay with that. Yeah, for sure. Um, are there any photos in particular that the chat is feeling that they want to see kind of carried over to tomorrow? Um, I mean, definitely. I really like that one with the perspective underneath. Oh because, yeah. Uh, yeah, that one's really cool. Yeah, this one's and also, this dope. also that one. This one? Which yeah. Is like, yeah, it's, so she's cool. so funny. I was like, Lex, perch up like Spider-Man on the on the bench, which is like this is from oh. like my kitchen. And she like immediately like did like this. And I was like, <laughs> like Lex, if not like literally like Spider-Man, then she started laughing. But th- this is actually like a semi-candid photo because she's laughing from me teasing her. And uh yeah, like I love <laughs> moments like this. Like this isn't like an occurrence. Like I I could never have planned for a moment like that. And I feel so lucky that I was able to have it. And then to be able to share it with the world, like, you know, growing up and oh, going that. to a prep school. Yeah. For people who are just uh, entering the chat now, like I went to a, uh, a very, you know, like a nice prep school in the suburbs and there were friends of mine whose parents wouldn't let them spend the night at my house. Cause where I lived made them nervous. And mm-hmm. I'd never felt like that reputation of my street was fair or accurate. And to mm-hmm. have an opportunity now to show the world, no, this is really where I came from. Like there's beauty here and there's safety here. And yeah. I have some of my best memories from being a kid up until last weekend when we did the shoot come from this humble place. Um, and when I started Case, my very first brand tagline was good things can come from anywhere. And it was in reference to this. And now to be able to, mm-hmm. to show that to the audience here on, on Behance is something that I, I do not take yeah. for granted. So for everybody who's popped in, uh, thank you and, and send to, to you as well. Thank you so much for being yeah, such an awesome, absolutely. generous, thoughtful host. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, actually, Phil here says the Spider-Man shot was their favorite too. So you are yeah. hit that one on the, yeah. on the target. Yeah, really cool. Yeah, yeah I, I love think this it's one, one as of, well. It's one of those things that like to be able to reconcile your relationship with a place you grew up with and be able to represent or express something that's a bit more accurate to the the actual narrative. Like I I noticed there was an image you had where you were in an abandoned location, it looked like. Um, And I was like, my my head went, whoa, cool. Um, There was one that I think maybe it was right at the start. Um, But yeah, there was like a a location that is a bit tagged up and... um, yeah, it reminded me of a spot that is that's familiar to me in in Miami too. That you know, it's a, for for better or worse, it's abandoned, but it ends up being taken over by like really cool artwork that yeah. you know, most people would denounce as you know, you know, this is just street like stuff. But in reality, it's actually folks that maybe don't have too much accessibility for technology or anything like that, and they find an outlet to be creative and isn't that worth celebrating at the end of the day yeah no I, and i love the texture like i'm a huge fan it's funny that you mentioned it like i love areas that have been like reclaimed like generally generationally so like you have like the original structure and then you know life just kind of happens and there's graffiti all over it and then yeah. you know eventually those people move away and then like literally like plants overtake it and then you've yeah. just got like these different layers and it's like whenever you see like a like a cut of stone and it's like oh like this a bit of crust is from the, the jurassic period like i love that people can kind of take those core samples and uh i try to or at least i have in the back of my mind when i'm 
having things in the background. Um, and Rochester is really funny where like there are these little angles where it looks like a completely different place. Because uh, for the most part, it's kind of your standard city. Um, but every now and again, you get this like little flair, like this little accent of, of something mm. a little bit different. And uh, where I shot this on Westfall Road, you would drive right past it and never know that that's where that photo was taken. Um, mm. And I love that we were able to kind of explore and, and find that. But yeah, this, uh, this area was super tagged up. And I ended up while I was shooting, I had a pair of LeBrons on and uh, a nail went right through the bottom of my oh. shoe. And, yeah, and just managed <laughs> to not stab me in the foot. So Lex was like, you have tetanus now? And I was like, I probably do. And then it turns out I'm still here. But yeah, but more I, I importantly, love you lost a shoe. No, so the, actually somehow the, the airbag didn't deflate. So I got very lucky. Um, oh. And then I don't have tetanus and everything worked out. There you go. Fancy shoes. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, these are so fun. But yeah, I'll go through the, the rest of these for tomorrow and then we'll we'll load them up. I think I have a yeah. sense of what people like um, color grading wise. And uh, this photo also is, is a, a fan favorite. I just love that she's so great. <laughs> like I yeah. can't speak, I cannot speak uh, to Lex's superpowers enough. Um, yeah, this this whole vibe is just it's so crazy. I love um, that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like tripping over any, the fact that it happened. Yeah. Do you have a, a from from our conversation today? Do you have the, a few tips that you would like uh, the audience that maybe just caught on um, to keep in mind? Yeah. Um. It from any perspective. So if you're conducting a photo shoot always check in with the subjects. Um, you know, they're lending themselves to you, even if they're professional, they're still trusting you with their, their time and their likeness and, um, you know, it, that that's important. So make sure that whatever you're doing, everybody's as comfortable as possible. And I think sometimes like you can ask somebody, are you comfortable with something? And they might just acquiesce because they don't want to ruffle feathers. Um, so right. if, you get the sense that they're not comfortable with it, just pivot. And then that kind of starts to speak to people that they are empowered to, to vocalize their concerns in real time and that you will address them. Um, and then from the actual Lightroom portion of things, iterate, uh, try different things, spend time with stuff, um, you know, push yourself a little bit. Now that I know that there are the, um, the new premium presets, I will definitely oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I will play around with these and, you know, allow yourself to use whatever you're doing as a, as a launching point and trust that, um, you know, whatever your, your commitment level is to the work itself, that outweighs how many people end up liking it, um, how many impressions it, it gets served across wh wherever you're placing it. Like the time that you get to spend just like, I, I don't know, at least for me, just to be able to say, oh my goodness, like I've had this weight on my shoulders for 34 years of people mischaracterizing where I'm coming from. And now I get to show people that it's vastly different from what they assumed it was. Right. That to me, it's like the photos could be off. I'm, I'm shocked I'm not crying. Like the photos could be terrible, but just like spend some time in that space and appreciate that that's the opportunity that you're, you're working on. And if you're working on a project that doesn't speak to you, Maybe not to that degree, but to any degree, then maybe reconsider. Life is so short. Right. Sometimes it's not so much about reinventing wheels, but like, or creating, innovating and all these grand things. But sometimes it's about revisiting something that needs a little polishing, like to be told a little bit better, yeah, uh, a little bit more genuinely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think that's, that's wonderful because it, sometimes that gets overseen and I've uh, just been like, okay, well, that's the standard it's status quo. What else can we do? <laughs> it's like, yeah. And, and even like, I think you mentioned it earlier, but because it's authentic to you, you're going to treat something in a, in a different way than, than somebody might, if it isn't authentic to them. So you I'm may sorry. not be attributing what you're doing as something new, but in all honesty, like it probably is like you are problem solving. Like if you're being mindful, like one thing is as a black subject and photos sometimes the way people color grade just makes black people look weird and you can almost always tell like that the person wasn't yeah. aware of that and uh that's something that i'm always very mindful of god forbid i'm standing in front of like a wood background because my camera just 
thinks that I'm wood colored and then the computer <laughs> kind of registers it as like some shade of orange and then everything yeah. gets wonky. And so like, I know that that's something that happens not just to me, but people of my skin tone. So I'm, I'm reluctant to have people in the foreground of like a wood background. And that's yeah. like a framing thing that not every photographer may be aware of. Mind. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's really interesting. Or even like the, so the color palettes that you might choose at a time, if you're create, trying to keep brand consistency, you yeah. might want to take in consideration your subject and say, well, how can I be more inclusive and make sure like there's, I, I, I started to do this thing in my wardrobe where like I started to stop buying black shirts because one day I attract the sun, so I'm more hot. But uh, I live in Texas, it's really hot. <laughs> I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah. But two, like I, I realized I really enjoy like wearing white shirts. So if that's my thing, then I'm going to buy more of that. Yeah. And so whenever there's a version or iteration of that style, but like in white, I'll buy it. And I'm like, yes, I'm sure I'm going to wear this much more than I would any other thing. Yeah. But it's interesting sometimes not to like when you, when I think about it, I think I did that decisions subconsciously because i love how my skin color looks on that shirt as yeah. opposed to a black shirt um which is something to to like kind of reconcile with when you're a brand to say like how can i best represent this uh person's co skin color and maybe yeah. highlight it in, in a beautiful way um with the brand <laughs> like yeah. clothes or you know whatever it may be uh, yeah, such an interesting, I'm so glad we talk about this stuff now because <laughs> it's such a beautiful point to yeah. consider. But yeah, Ta Torin, I'm so, so happy that we were, we've been able to chat today. I feel like we just dove into so many different uh, parts of your branding and also the behind the scenes that was very, very insightful and very relatable. Um, yeah. Can you let us know where we uh, can find you for now and also a little bit about um, uh tomorrow so we can get excited yeah of course so there's my um my behance profile uh which i think we shared and then uh likewise on instagram if you follow me at uh Kesa underscore design um uh, i should pop right up cool thank you so much yeah thank you thanks everyone on the chat see you tomorrow